Gameplay de Patch of Exile 2. Bora que eu acho que tá da hora, hein, mano. Welcome to Path of Exile 2. We'd like to start off by showing some of the gameplay of Act 3, one of the six acts in POE 2's campaign. Seis atos. Here in the jungle depths. Act 3 is set in the ruins of the vile civilization which fell thousands. Já começou rodando. The jungle has taken oh. over their former once great cities. Tá bonito, hein, mano. Is one of our six new character classes called the monk. Ah, tá de longe. One, we had one character class for each of the combinations of strength, dexterity and intelligence. When looking at the design of POE 2 though, we realized that many of the new skills that we were trying to design just didn't really fit thematically with the existing classes that Eita. we had. Being a spellcaster with a bare form makes sense for strength, <coughs> but it doesn't really sound like something that a Templar would do. We realized that since we had new mechanics for every attribute combination, it actually made sense to design new character classes to explore the new things. In POE 2, every attribute combination has two classes associated with it. Strengthened has the Templar or the Druid, on Dexterity you have the Ranger or the more spare-focused Huntress, and on Dexent you have the Shadow and the Monk. Which mark is playing? Boy, irado, Each tá? class has its own three ascendancies that let you further specialize the class in the way that only that class has access to. But Nossa, they both irado, the same velho. location on the passive tree. The quest rewards you're offered on the two variants are tailored to the class, but of course, this is POE. You can still mix and match anything to your heart's content. Cara, o negócio. Todo mundo sempre falou para eu jogar POE que eu ia viciar nesse jogo que eu ia amar. Sabe por que eu nunca joguei? Looks Porque like ele tem muito conteúdo, o POE 1. POE 2. Pegar o POE 2 do começo, eu vou amassar, mano. Porque aí eu vou querer acompanhar os conteúdos, entendeu? Way through the campaign, and they all have unique mechanics to learn. Mas eu acho que Poi é um jogo que eu não jogaria hardcore, que não tô fazendo com o Diablo, não. Provavelmente jogaria. Nem sei se tem hardcore, né? Cara, o boneco tá dando uns rolamentos, né? Será que é do Monk isso aí? Ou, ou... É, tá pesado, né? A luta, eu achei maneiro. Olha que da hora. Tá bonito, hein, mano? Assim, só pra deixar... Nossa, animar essa luta, mano. Olha que coisa tensa. É que depois no late game do, do Poi, eu já vi, mano. É explodir os inimigos, tá ligado? Você sai explodindo os inimigos loucamente também. Mas é que ele tem um endgame gigantesco, né? O Poi 1 é, é assustador, mano. Eu não joguei o Poi 1 porque é muito conteúdo, mano. E eu falei, mano, eu não vou conseguir nem arranhar isso aqui. Então, eu tô muito empolgado com o Poi 2 de eu conseguir pegar ele desde o comecinho, sabe? O visual do jogo tá muito da hora, tá com muita profundidade, mano. Blue markers over Nossa, animal, animal. Mark has a skill equipped called Killing Palm. Whenever an enemy has a blue indicator over it, it means the monster is low enough life to cull with Killing Palm. Successfully executing ah, cull will give you a power charge. This is an important skill for the monk. Nossa, que da hora. The skills interact with power charges. Nossa, que da hora. Você pode sair acumulando cargas de poder nos inimigos e matar todos numa só que maneira, velho. We've done a lot of work in POE 2 to make using skills like this feel satisfying. Nossa, If tá aparecendo, né, mano? Slightly off the monster, the skill will automatically lock on to the colorable target and will even do a small amount of pathfinding around obstacles. Olha o visual que fica no chão. Caraca, Caraca mano, o jogo tá muito skill, lindo, velho. Nothing is going to get in your way. Once you have some power charges, you need some skills to power up. A great follow-up is Falling Thunder. Falling Thunder without a power charge just creates a relatively small lightning AoE in front of you. But do it with some power charges and it turns into a pack clearer with a large number of extra projectiles. O menu também bem legal, hein? What you'll notice here is that like almost every melee skill in POE 2, Falling Thunder has a bit of extra movement built in just in case you need it. Using the skill within range and you'll do a flip in place. But use it a larger range and your character will move forward while executing it. Ah, que legal. Ah, ok. Nossa, uma movimentação muito bonita, velho. In POE 2, you also get a short period to redirect your target. Notice how you can start the skill facing one way, then whip the mouse sideways to land the skill in a different direction? In order to get power charges, you're gonna first need to get some lower life monsters. A resposta do, do, da direção do mouse tá, tá bem legal mesmo. Tá parecendo bem preciso, né? Is a good option. It doesn't do much damage per hit, but it covers a lot of ground. And notice how you can turn as you do it? Generally speaking, you never lose control of your character in POE 2. If you make a turn at the right time, you can get a couple of extra hits in on the monsters, getting them into range of your cull. Follow up with a killing palm, then finish off the rest of the pack with your falling thunder. Olha 
Mas vai ter outras classes ainda, We've mano. Isso aí rolou lá na... na, na, na... The the Valve, the tipo, tem um Poi Convention, assim, um Patch of Exile now, com. A é a Patch Con, Patch... É o negócio assim, Poi Con. Que é o... Mano, que nem a gente tem essas apresentações de jogo, né? Um NPC, para onde você está. Para dar mais informação, para ajudar você com os objetivos de quest, e para que você não tenha que sempre voltar para a cidade. Nesse caso, vamos chamar um Alva para saber o que fazer. Esse mecanismo... If powered with a small soul core, it could open that door. As questions are going to be passed. There must soul cores somewhere around here. They had to power these constructs somehow. As Alpha said, we need to find a soul core to open this door. Let's explore. If you want to shave off some life without getting too close to some of the more dangerous monsters, a good option is Wind Blast. Wind Blast also doesn't do too much damage. Sabe a sensação que tá passando? O monge tá aquele negócio de ficar pulando pra um lado e pro outro, sabe? Isso tá muito legal, velho. Isso é muito monge, tipo... Note that the bigger the enemy is, the less they'll be pushed back. So trying to push back some giants isn't gonna be effective. Queria ver inventário, tá ligado? There's the soul core. Let's get back to the door. Olha, mano, tá muito legal, mano. Tá muito bonito, caralho. Eu achei que toda a interface também tá de muito bom gosto, tá ligado? Ó, vocês viram como o gelinho surgiu ali ao redor da vida, né? Que deve ser o escudo dele. Ó, a animação. Puta, muito maneiro, velho. If you need to defeat tougher enemies, it might be time to break out some of the ice skills in the monk's arsenal. Glacial Cascade creates a wave of ice that moves slowly in front of the player. It's pretty ineffective against fast-moving monsters because most of the damage occurs right at the end of the wave. And so a lot of monsters will just walk right by it. But if you can find a way to make a monster stop at just the right place, it can be very effective. In order to do that, you probably want to freeze monsters. The monk has a few different tools to do this. A fairly simple option is to get right in the monster's face with Ice Strike. Ice Strike doesn't do too much damage on the first two hits, but attack three times in sequence and you can get off a combo that has a much higher chance to freeze. Get in there with that freeze, then roll back and finish the job with a Glacial Cascade. Now, remember how Glacial Cascade had that extra damaging spike at the end? If you've hit a frozen enemy with that spike, it shatters the ice on the enemy and does a devastating amount of damage. Caraca, you mago de gelo. <laughs> oh yeah, I just uh, casually mentioned rolling back before. Did I forget to mention that in Peewee 2 we added a dodge roll to every character? Ah, todo the personagem tem a rolagem, tá? To roll. There's no Eita, nice. There's no limitations. It even has a bit of built-in pathfinding so you don't get stuck on things. When you dodge roll, you're not invulnerable. If something hits you, you're gonna feel it, but most things will not hit you. That's ah. because projectiles and melee strikes will always miss. You'll have to roll ah. out the AoE, but anyone swinging a sword or throwing a fireball is going to miss. Ah. The really important function of the dodge roll is that it lets you cancel out of almost any skill at any time. This ah, que legal, pois vai deixar o jogo muito rápido, mano. Something is about to hit you. It really changes how skills with longer attack and cast times play. Oh, você vê ele cancelando com o rolamento? Cuidado, velho. So, that's one way to get out of the way of damage. But the monk specializes in mobility, so it makes sense that he would have a few more. Wave of Frost is one of our new attacks with a retreat built right in. You move backwards and throw out a cold attack with a significant freeze. Nossa, que maneiro, velho. To follow up with Glacial Cascade and do a whole pile of damage. Nossa, que legal, mano. Vocês viram? Então, tipo, você pode fazer um, um combo de movimento e habilidade, rolamento e habilidade, aí ele dá um giro pra trás e aí, tipo, como... Nossa, o final da skill dele dá mais dano, dá um... Nossa, muito bonito e muito legal, mano. Ice bomb on your target. Kill or deal enough damage to the target and the bomb will explode. Doing some damage and a significant freeze. Nossa, que da hora, velho. Where the wave of ice might not be enough to get that freeze off. But you really want to get that glacial cascade damage bonus. Get back! Parece tá irado. E o sonho de, o sonho de boy gostaram? Like a strike. It's a monk skill now, and another skill that consumes power charges. If you've played Peewee One, you know what to expect. It's a great finisher for tough boss fights, and uh, it looks pretty impressive too. Ai que da hora. Nossa, tá muito da hora, mano. Tá muito bonito a gameplay do monstro. Tá merda. 
Hmm, another door. I wonder what could be in there. <laughs> we'll keep what Starla. Asa! Esse combo é muito bonito, mano. Tá maluco. Boss fightzinha? Boss fightzinha. Nossa, que da hora! Black Jow. Especially the combo of Freeze and Glacial Cascade. If you're a PoE 1 player, you might think that you can't really rely on Freeze because there's so many bosses that are immune to it. But in PoE 2, that's changing significantly. In PoE 1, Freeze is a binary mechanic. An attack freezes the target, or it doesn't. What this basically means is that in PoE 1, we were forced to add Freeze immunity to many bosses because Freeze just trivialized them. Because of that, freezing was something you only really used while pack clearing, and not something you could rely on as a core part of your build for boss fight. In PoE 2 though, all crowd control mechanics now have internal meters that allow you to build up to a freeze or stun, or whatever other CC mechanic you might Danger. Use. It's a Danger, little bit Danger. like poise from games like Elden Ring, though the meters tend to be a lot smaller than those games. When you freeze an enemy, you the the ring the the freeze you need to do another freeze, but the increased difficulty bleeds away slowly. More freeze will always let you freeze the boss more often, but this system means it will not get out of control in party play or interact badly with other CC mechanics, allowing us to let these kinds of mechanics actually work against all bosses. Puta, que maneiro, velho. Mano, muito legal, velho. E esses, nossa, e, e o visual do jogo tá muito legal, mano. Ó, oh, ó. Oh. Muito da hora, velho. Que isso. Animal, mano. Animal. Tomou ele. Olha o machado do bicho em chamas. Nossa, que da hora. Ele vai levar o Black Jaw. Nossa, é muito da hora, mano. Blackjaw has dropped a consumable quest item, the Flame Core. It's a permanent plus 10 to spirit. In PoE 2, we really tá to legal, feel rewarded for exploration. It wouldn't be much good if we made all these awesome optional bosses if we didn't have something great to find for killing them. One of the things you might find for killing a boss is a permanent stat bonus to your character. Mm. Your head, come. Legal demais isso, hein? Puta merda. Daqui a pouco vai trocar de classe, eu acho. Eita, bugou. Ao vivaço. Ah, olha o sangue descendo, velho. Eu já tá aqui. Morri, morri, morri. Os inimigos tem alguns que eu gosto, tem alguns que eu gosto bastante do design, tem outros que nem tanto. In order to help us with this next area, we're going to call in a sorceress. Mark's friend Octavian is going to send a friend invite which we're going to accept, and then they can play together. 
The sorceress is the new intelligence focused character in PoE2. Da hora, da hora. While the witch Nossa, tá igualzinha do diabo, mano. É assustador. É assustador, é assustador né? Let's have a look at how she plays. Assustador, mano. Eu gosto dos portaizinhos e abrindo bem a galera. Mano, olha que da hora essa múmia na parede, mano. Ah, essa múmia, esse, sei lá. Com os braços de serpente. Olha o design desse... Nossa, é louco. Se isso aí não for uma boss fight, eu sou um cachorro quente, mano. Nós temos alguns skills aqui que você conhece, que você jogou PoE 1 antes. Mas eles se sentem um pouco diferente de jogar agora. Spark is great in these tight passages since it bounces around. We've added a pierce support gem to really allow it to hit an entire room of targets. For a more single target focus skill, Arc is a good choice. It does more damage to the first target you hit. Caralho, o mago explodindo tudo. Que isso, velho? If you find yourself surrounded, it might be good to use Ice Nova. Meu Deus. It's all enemies around you and slows them down with chill. Just be careful. Getting up close and personal isn't the ideal place for a sorceress to be. She doesn't have the defenses of a more melee oriented character. Eu não vou. If you want to help, eu não joguei um, tá? Eu não joguei, eu já falei, não joguei o Patch of Exile 1. Então eu não sei o quanto que do suco Patch of Exile aí foi, foi tomado no, no Mago do Diablo, mas isso aí está assustadoramente igual. É que a gameplay tá parecendo bem diferente, mano. Just be careful. You have to be standing still for a little while. Mas skill, né? So não trying to stun on it isn't the best strategy. Now, Octagon Mas não tô acusando ninguém de nada, tá? Só pra deixar bem claro aí. Senão depois vem um pessoal me xingar aí e falar, não joguei, não sei. Well, we're pretty sick of the fact that in PoE1, basically every character was playing with no mana pool. So we decided to change the way that reservation works. Meu é a opinião de um diablista. Spirit. Spirit is a dedicated resource you can use for ongoing effects like Arctic Armor, Heralds, Auras, or even Minions. Everyone starts with 100 Spirit. Which is enough for most ongoing effects. Tá. If you want more than one effect, you're gonna need some more spirit. Spirit is available on mods from items and on the passive tree. But if you're willing to give up your offhand slot, the easiest way to get it is by holding a scepter. Now, if you want to increase the cold damage you're dealing, you can use a frost bomb. It places a bomb on the ground that reduces the enemy's cold resistance while it's ticking down. Ah, que legal. It's a great opportunity to use some cold skills before it explodes. And speaking of cold skills, a great skill to use on monsters with the slower cold resistance is Comet. This is a new skill in PoE 2, and it hits pretty damn hard. It costs a lot of mana and has a really long cast time, but it's worth the wait. It does a devastating amount of damage. To help get you out of danger, your character moves back slightly as it casts. It's pretty hard to hit a fast-moving opponent, But it's great on tougher enemies than Nossa, mano, o bagulho vem que nem um meteoro, mano, que da hora. Da hora demais, né? If you run out of mana casting too many of those, I can use to cast your free to cast fireball. Where did that come from, you ask? Well, this is a great opportunity to explain the way we've changed caster weapons in PoE 2. Ah. Caster weapons had a default melee attack that nobody used. Ah, é lógico, né? They also had a bunch of attack mods that would spawn in them that were useless to a caster. In PoE 2, we wanted to clean that up. So now each Legal. start Olha. a built-in free-to-cast spell. Mm. Just put it on and spam to your heart's content. Now this particular stuff is the base type that you get right on the starting beach. Tá. It's quite likely that you're going to outgrow it. So that's why we have a lot of staves with more utility-focused powers for casters to use. Here we have a crystal staff. It's got a pretty cool built-in spell called Unleash. Nossa, beleza, man. Isso é, essa é uma ideia legal também de fazer, pô. Triple cast whatever you cast with your next spell. Now, of course, you're probably going to want to use that with something powerful. And Comet is a great option. Nossa, como tá bonito, velho. Leash is one of the few skills in PoE 2 with a cooldown. In general, we really try to avoid using cooldowns because we really hate the feeling that combat is just waiting to be able to use your next skill. But it does make sense for Unleash since it's free to cast and it's something we want you to be using situationally anyway. Now, if you're facing something tough, you might want to try out Mana Tempest. Mana Tempest creates a circle of power in which your character literally hovers over the ground. 
While in the circle, your mana drains, but it powers up all of your spells. Lightning projectiles fork, beams chain further, and you'll also do a lot more damage. Man. Isso tá muito bonito, tá? Tá muito bonito. So with all of these skills, here's a great combo to try. First, cast Frost Bomb to reduce the target's cold resistance. Then use Mana Tempest to increase your damage. Follow up with Unleash and then triple cast the Comet to do a truly insane amount of damage. <laughs> que da hora. Maga é muito forte, né, mano? Você vê que o monstro tava apanhando que nem não sei o que lá, todos os bichos dando porrada. Mano, a Maga não toma porrada, velho. Não passa do escudinho azul dela ali. É muito forte, mano. Os inimigos não te, não te alcançam, tá ligado? This is a good opportunity to talk about how skill gems drop in PoE 2. Instead of dropping specific gems, you can find uncut gems. Just right-click on them and pick whatever skill you want. The gem will come pre-leveled to the area you drop, so it's a lot easier to change between skills in PoE 2. This time, I think it might be cool to grab one of our meta gems. Meta gems are skills that can have other skills socketed into them, changing how they work. In this case, we're going to select Cast on Shock. Now, let's equip this thing in the skill screen and choose a spell to trigger with it. I think Comet might be fun. Because Cast on Shock reserves Spirit, we'll need to first disable our Arctic Armor. We have to decide if we'd rather have the extra defense or the extra offense of the Cast on Shock using our Spirit. Da. In Nossa, Pewee 2, é muito Trigger complexo. Gems use a system of filling up cast time on each trigger. Basically, if a skill has a short cast time, then we'll trigger it really often. If it's got a long cast time, like this Comet here, it will take a lot longer to trigger. You can see up the top left, there's a counter that says how far it is until your next trigger. Ah, entenderam, chat? Cast on Shock will automatically cast Comet whenever we're using our Lightning. Você equipa uma, uma habilidade no gatilho de outra habilidade. E ali em cima, no canto superior, ó, fica mostrando, ó, 60, aí vai ter 70, 80. Quando der 100, vai cair um cometa, ó. 70. On the generator. Time to power it up. É, não vai aparecer tão cedo, mas tudo bem, vamos lá. Nossa, olha, olha, olha o cenário, mano. Caralho, tá muito bonito, tá maluco. Ó, fica observando lá em cima, ó, 80%, 90%, ó, o cometa caiu. Cara, isso é build infinita, tá? Isso é build infinita no jogo. One players might have noticed is this character has both ice and lightning spells. That's pretty inefficient, isn't it? It's a big no-no for most builds because any specialization into cold or lightning isn't going to affect the other element. And generic elemental damage increases are not going to be as powerful as focusing on a single element. Well, in PoE 2, we have another major new system to introduce to solve these kinds of problems, and it starts with Weapon Swap. Now, in PoE 1, Weapon Swap isn't really used much for its originally intended use case. We imagined that people were going to be swapping in and out between different weapons to deal with whatever situation they were in. People just don't do that at all. É, se, a large se reason for that is really awkward to do. In PoE 2, we wanted to solve that. The staff Octavian is using here has an ice mod on it that makes it great for when he's using his ice spells. We would also like to be able to make sure that the build works just as well for his lightning spells. If Octavian equips his previous staff in his second weapon set, you can see that it. Oh, seki dao! Now we're going to open up the skill screen. If Octavian opens up the skill options for his lightning skills, you can see here that you can choose which weapon sets are usable with each skill. First, we uncheck set one from being used by his lightning skills. Then we go through the cold skills and turn those off with his lightning weapon. Uh, então, cara, você pode ter builds diferentes baseada na sua arma. Now, when we use Spark, the character will automatically switch to the lightning staff on his back and then use the skill. When Octavian uses Ice Nova, his character automatically switches over to his Ice Staff before using. Nossa, isso é muito legal. Isso é a mecânica, é praticamente a mecânica do Bárbaro, né? Que tem agora no Diablo, só que, mano, faz todo sentido ser na mão do mago com um cajado específico de cada elemento, né? Mas nós ainda temos o problema dos passivos. Não seria bom se pudéssemos especializar em ambos os passivos e os passivos de fogo no personagem? Bem, em Peewee 2, você pode. Estamos aqui no passivo de fogo, e você pode ver que estamos em um fogo e um fogo de fogo. At the top right of the screen, you can see where we have some weapon set specific points to allocate. If Octavian holds shift, he can allocate set 1 to the cold passives. And then allocate set 2 to the lightning passives. 
Yeah, yeah, baby. Check this out. As we weapon swap, our passive tree changes from one build to the other automatically. Whenever we cast the appropriate spell, the character's can configure on the fly to the correct build for that spell. Now you Isso é muito bizarro. Passive on your tree. Only points granted from skill books will allow this kind of dual specialization. So you can't change from a mace slamming warrior. Você pode então. Você pode ter duas builds dentro do mesmo personagem de acordo com a arma que tá equipada nele, mano. Porque a hora que ele troca pro cajado, os ataques dele daquele elemento ficam mais, fo mais fortes. E ele já muda a árvore de passiva também. Aí você muda pro outro cajado, ele volta pra árvore de passiva. Mano! Really opens up your options. Tá maluco. Tá maluco, tá maluco. Tá completamente maluco. Não, assim, quem não começar a jogar esse jogo no lançamento Tá lascado pra jogar dois, três anos depois, tá? Isso funciona um pouco como o Trigger Gem que eu falei antes Mas esse aqui charges up as your energy shield is hit by monsters Eu acho que nós poderíamos colocar um Ice Nova nesse aqui Quanto mais energy shield você lose, mais a charge se up Até o ponto em que você pode castar a skill que você socketed instantaneamente nossa, velho Aquele bagulho de triggerar a magia com a outra magia Pode ser com porrada também, ó, ó. Ele vai ficar apanhando, ó E o bagulho vai soltar o, o, o Frost Nova automático Mano Que salada <risos> Ah, é irado, mas masterizar esse jogo aí vai ser impossível, mano. Puta merda, que da hora, mano. Cara, isso aí é jogo de maluco, tá? Isso aí é jogo de maluco, isso aí é jogo de quem não quer mais ter vida mesmo, assim. Here we are, back at the charge soul core. All we have to do now is take it. How hard could that be? <laughs> Mais uma boss fightzinha. Ah, voltou pro monk. Ah, não, tá tão legal a maguinha, cara. Ai, 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 o bicho ali que eu falei, ó. Levantou, ó, lógico. <laughs> Zicotles. Zicot, Zicot. Zicotal. Zicotal. Zicotal fica legal, nem sei se é isso, mas... Olha os dois combando, ó. O Du combando os status no bicho. Que maneiro. Nossa, velho. Esse jogo, ele é tão complexo Que ele pode ficar chato mano. Que loucura, né? Ele é tão complexo, ele tem tanta profundidade De novo, isso, isso aqui é a palavra de quem não jogou O Patch of Exile 1, tá? E não joguei porque eu sei que ele é muito complexo Mas isso aí tá parecendo um grau de profundidade De gameplay, mano Que ou você vai amar Ou você vai odiar Porque, caraca, mano, que da hora Eu, eu empolgo muito, mano Eu tô numa fase da minha vida que eu quero Pegar um jogo desse e jogar até o meu dedo do cair, mano Pô, só que podia ter suporte pra controle, né? O Poi 1 tem, guys. Suporte pra controle, porque... Tá maluco, cara. Isso é coisa de doido. É, é muito coisa de doido. Tem uma coisa pra dizer pra vocês Se for bom ou se for ruim Eu só sei que eu quero muito jogar, mano Well, we're last year of development Finishing acts, adding skills and balancing everything The closed beta will start on June 7th, 2024 Nossa, tá longe! And we're incredibly excited to be near the finish line But we're not quite there yet We are determined not to rush this Eu estou aqui hypadíssimo! Thanks for watching Porra Se você gostou, deixa seu like, se inscreve, é nóis Nossa